Officer Jonathan Diller, uh, he, his wake will happen today uh, on Long Island. His funeral is set for Saturday. The suspect, Guy Rivera, here he is. Poor guy. Mm. God rest him. The suspect, Guy Rivera, was found to have a shiv stored in his rectum during the shooting uh, in an apparent wow. anticipation of being sent to jail again. One can only hope it gets used against him soon. Um, and he's arrested and responsible, according to the cops, for the murder of this young cop. Yeah. What do you guys make of it? I mean, it's just monstrous. It is It is unfortunate that there is a political dimension to, to acts of violence like this, but there is certainly with respect to New York and local politics and how the city has just been in this very weird place. Uh, I'd say we've saw a monstrous climb in violence in the city. It's gone down in a pretty dramatic way as well, but only because it went up so big. Um, but with respect to like, presidential politics, the national politics, I mean, I feel a little bad for Corinne Jean-Pierre there. She has a president who probably doesn't have the stamina to make it to a wake early in the day and then go to a big event like this. And by the way, on Camille, tonight. on that point, he's got a several hours of free time between yeah. the time he mm. arrives momentarily and this evening's event. He but could one, go. One could mm. imagine what, what he might look like later in the evening, though. Mm. I mean, the guy just does not have the stamina to do it. When he's doing the State of the Union in the evening, he's resting up all day to go to that event. So it, their hands are perhaps somewhat tied. That yeah. said, it is a really, really bad look from a political standpoint. Yeah, I mean, it, regardless if, if you think this is smart to politicize certain things, like it's irrelevant it in a way. It is political, yeah. But it is political. Is It reminded me of 2006, sorry, 2020 when I was in Wisconsin. And after the Jacob Blake yep. uh, shooting, which left him paralyzed, and of course the original narrative of that was that he was just going to break up a fight. It turned out he was like, uh, you know, had a restraining order and he mm -hmm. had a knife on him and pulled the knife. I was there and I said, oh God, this everything just shut down. Well, President Trump came to town and he was surveying the damage, all the stuff mm -hmm. that was, was burned down. The same, I think it was the same day or maybe been the, the morning after, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Biden met with Jacob Blake and his family. And Jacob Blake is not a good guy. No. And what happened to him was his own damn fault, yeah. I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I mean, it's like even when Corinne Jean-Pierre says, and I hate to nitpick like this, he lost his life in the line of duty. He was murdered. Right. And I watched the video, which I do not recommend anyone watches. There's another video that was released today, which you can just hear him ri screaming and writhing in pain after he's been shot. But it's important to see those things because those bring home just the hideousness of this violence and the effect it has on Obviously, this guy is a very young child and, and a wife, and it's absolutely awful. You would imagine that in a presidential race, which is all about gesture politics, it's, what it, it's the only thing it is. I mean, you would make that gesture and go do it, and Donald Trump's going to step into that that you know breach there and do it. I, it's the right decision, I would say. It's no, it's no. Why wouldn't Joe Biden go to this? I'm sorry, but like this cop mm -hmm. is going to be. The, the, his picture is going to be used in this campaign for the next seven months if he completely blows this off because the Democrats have been criticized, been criticized for being too soft on crime. This guy was a career criminal who shot this cop, had been arrested 21 times. He was out on parole. I mean, anybody who's got the shiv up the anus in anticipation of yeah. the cops pulling them over is a career criminal with whom society should be done. Yes. It, we should be done with him. But you know, New York City went cash bail. We've had soft on crime prosecutors. A lot of people believe that's why we've had the decrease in crime. Um, Raphael Mangel has been saying that, that don't believe these soft, these lower crime numbers because the cops aren't making the arrest now. They know that the people just get turned right back out on the street. In any event, um, people are angry about the crime situation, even though it's kind of like the economy where we're, we're being told, oh, it's better, it's better, it's better. Mm -hmm. Well, tell it to the the, the family of this officer. Yeah. Eric Adams uh, had a press conference and he's like literally schizophrenic, at least not <laughs> on a policy level. Um, because on one hand, he'll portray the city as a hellhole and then the next day it's like, I can't believe everyone's calling this place a hellhole. Yeah, yeah. But All he, trains are safe. Yeah. 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 You can pay no here. attention to the National Guard. And by the way, you can come here and someday you get a 9-11. If anyone doesn't remember he's that. actually yeah. said that. Well. What is great about New York? Someday you get a 9 I was like, this man is deranged. <laughs> he had I'm sorry. He did. He listed it as he one of the great things about it. New York. If you don't believe me, go look this up. <laughs> he had at his uh, press conference uh, this week a uh, big uh, like prop arrow pointing down. It's an orange arrow pointing down and at 5.6% saying, since I've been mayor, uh, crime on the subway has gone down 5.6%. Yeah. No. 
Mm. It hasn't. Yeah. It hasn't. Right. Mm-hmm. Like right. reported crime, sure. Right. Uh, I was just today taking the subway here, and uh, on the eighth or so stop, I was remarking to myself in the my interior monologue, jabbering like a crazy person, um, <laughs> like this, everyone else in the train. <laughs> this is <laughs> remarking to myself. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time that I've taken in the cab. a train ride in weeks where I haven't seen some kind of jabbering lunatic or someone who's uh, asleep in their own feces or something. Oh, and just when that happened, the jabbering lunatic came staggering <laughs> down the aisle and, and not menacing people, but just like freaking people out. I mean, that that is the observed reality. Yeah. This week, four people have died so far, probably more, but since um, on Monday and Tuesday of this week, where I think we're on Thursday now, um, four people. Uh, uh, died. Some were killed. One was a teenager one stop away from my house who's one year older than my daughter, uh, was walking on a catwalk, got hit by a, a subway car. There's just no way in which you don't feel like mm-hmm. the city is less safe than it was five years ago, yeah. and the subways in particular. And The juxtaposition is astonishing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You have um, Stephen Colbert, who was funny 15 years ago, yeah. um, <laughs> but has become part of this kind of clapter democratic chorus uh, uh, the comedy in air quotes, you know, is giving a Radio City Music Hall $25 million fundraiser in a city that has a lot of rich people. It's great to be rich. Gosh. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and if you're super rich, it's great to live in Manhattan and it's great to live in Hollywood and other places like that. But all you have to do is look around you. And the same is true in Chicago where the Democrats are really wisely having their uh, Democratic National yeah. Convention this year. There are dysfunctions happening in major cities that are obvious to the people who mm-hmm. live there that aren't rich. Um, mm-hmm. And to have have and to allow that and like even showcase that disparity is amazing. And also it must be said that Biden is going to have a huge fundraising advantage all throughout this presidential campaign because yeah, mm. Donald Trump is raising every single dollar to pay for his own legal. Tom Wolf would have a full he would have yeah. a field day. <laughs> <laughs> bonfires it, 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 of the vanities. It, it, it's like I I have to point this out all the time, and it's frustrating to do so. But when people talk about the numbers in New York, and the numbers have gone up, particularly in the subway subway mm-hmm. crime, but I always hear these like pompous assholes that are just on. You know what's happening? If you look at the numbers, I was like, dude, I ride the subway every day. Right. I texted these guys last night. We recorded last night. The episode will be up later. It's it's an outrageous one. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> I left and I got on the subway at Spring Street and it was the fucking Michael Jackson thriller video. There's just <laughs> zombies. And I was like, and I said, this is how crazy it is. As I said to Camille, this guy came up to me and he was like, you look like Robin Williams. And I was like, no, I don't. I don't look like Robin Williams. Like a hairy, what are you talking what about? Did you, what did you actually say? Yeah, I said, please leave me alone. <laughs> Here's a dollar, go away. But that is the thing. And they say, well, subway crime. And Matt is right. Every time you're on the subway, there's something. Every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. None of this is reported. What do you do? Call 911 and say it's full of crazy people right, right. that are menacing? I sent you guys a video this morning that was taken on the subway last night of a guy going around and I saw him. punching. I mm-hmm. saw him. This is, you can't call the police. Nobody calls the police. Right. What are you going to say? There's a crazy person on the subway who didn't hurt anyone mm-hmm. but was menacing people. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. That's not recorded. And if you ride the subway as much as I do, and I do, this is a class issue because Matt is right to point that out. When you have these pompous people right over here at, you know, literally a block away, you know, $25 million, you know, $100,000 take a picture with these desiccated old presidents, well, the normal people living in this city are riding the subway and seeing something that these people will never see in their lives or never see it again if they ever saw it in the past. And to live in this world and when people say, well, actually, here are the numbers. And I'm like, I'm sorry. At least it's not 1975. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, believes in equal opportunity and that the American dream starts with purpose. Change the world for good by putting others before yourself. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, GCU's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. With over 330 academic programs as of September, GCU meets you where you are and provides a path to help you fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.